Oh, hey there, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be making some more recipes that are under two euros per serving. So this is the third video that we've done like this, budget-friendly meals videos. In case you're interested in seeing the other two, I'll link those for you below. But how this works is we're gonna be sharing some different recipes in today's video, and each of the recipes serves about four in total. And then each of those servings is about two euros or about two US dollars each. Um, and actually, I think in today's video, all the recipes are gonna come out to be under a euro 50 each, which is super cool. Now we do recognize that you, our beautiful audience, you're global, so you live in different countries and groceries cost different amounts in different countries. So we're basing all all of the prices in all of our videos based on what we know, which is the groceries that we buy here in the Netherlands. So we're hoping that they're budget-friendly recipes for you as well, but more than anything, maybe they're just gonna be some awesome recipe ideas, inspiration for lunch and dinner that you can enjoy at home. So without further ado, let's dive right in. For the first recipe, we're making this colorful and vibrant sweet and sour tofu stir fry. We're gonna first begin by pressing a 450 gram block of extra firm tofu over the sink just letting any excess liquid drip off before we then cut it up into about one centimeter sized cubes. We can then transfer these cubes over to a large bowl and then I'm gonna pour over top about two tablespoons of sodium reduced soy sauce. I'm gonna give it a gentle toss first before I then sprinkle over top about a quarter of a cup of cornstarch plus half of a teaspoon of salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. And using a spoon or your hands, just gently toss it. It's gonna feel a little bit sticky. We're just gonna keep going until everything is evenly coated. And then we can move on to making the sweet and sour sauce. So to a bowl, we're gonna add in first a half of a cup of pineapple juice that we can get either from a can or a jar of pineapple chunks. And then we're also gonna add in a quarter cup of rice vinegar, three tablespoons of sodium reduced soy sauce, two tablespoons of maple syrup, a quarter cup of tomato paste, two cloves of crushed garlic, two teaspoons of cornstarch, and a teaspoon of freshly grated ginger. Then we're gonna give this all a mix until it's all well combined. In case you're curious, the cornstarch in this recipe serves two different functions. So the cornstarch that's on the tofu, that kind of serves to just make it a little bit more crispy when it's cooking on the stove, whereas the cornstarch that we put in the sauce, that's gonna thicken it and it's gonna give it that characteristic sweet and sour stickiness, which is really nice. But you could always, if you don't have cornstarch, use uh, rice flour, potato starch, arrowroot starch, or even just regular flour. So whichever one you've got is fine. But for now, let's move on to cooking the tofu. So to a large pan on medium high heat, we're gonna add in about a tablespoon of oil, and when it's hot, we can then add in the blocks of tofu. They're gonna need about seven to 10 minutes to cook, and we'll check on it every couple of minutes or so to give it a toss. Now while that cooks away, we're gonna also chop up some veggies. So here I'm thinly slicing about one red onion, and I'm also gonna chop up one large carrot into little bits, and then we can slice the equivalent of one full bell pepper. Here I'm using half of a red bell pepper and half of a green one just to make the dish more colorful, but you don't need to mix it up. One full bell pepper of any color of your choosing is also great. So once we're done chopping, this is also a great time to start cooking the rice so that it finishes cooking at the same time as everything else. By about now, the tofu should also be done cooking and nice and golden on all sides. And when it is, we're just gonna transfer it over to a bowl and then we're gonna return that same pan to the heat. We're gonna add a little bit of vegetable oil and when it's hot, we're gonna add in the onion and carrot to cook. This is gonna need about four to five minutes all together. And then we can add in the bell pepper along with half of a cup of pineapple chunks that we just got from a jar. We're then gonna cook this all together for another minute or so before we pour in the sweet and sour sauce, adding in the tofu here as well. And then we're just gonna give this a stir and let it all come to a gentle simmer. And then we wanna let it cook for at least three minutes at this point. So in order for the cornstarch to work its magic and to thicken up, we actually need to let it sit at a gentle boil for at least a minute, if not longer. So just be careful not to take it off the heat too soon. But once you see the sauce is starting to thicken up, then you're already good to go. Now we're ready to serve this one up. So to make the presentation a bit more fun, we can scoop the cooked rice into some small bowls, just gently press it down, and then we can flip the bowl upside down onto a serving plate and voila, scoop up a generous amount of the sticky sweet and sour veggie and tofu mixture to serve alongside the rice. If you'd like, you can also garnish it with an optional little sprinkle of green onions. And now your meal is served and ready to enjoy. 
that sweet and fruity tropical taste of the pineapple is easily my favorite part of the dish. And if you're a fan of sweet and sour, then maybe, definitely, consider giving this recipe a try. Now the total per serving for this recipe comes to a euro and 36 cents each. And if you choose to have that optional garnish, then the total comes to a euro and 39 cents each. But feel free to pack up any extras in some containers to enjoy as lunch or dinner throughout the week. This next recipe is a real eye catcher on the table. We're gonna be making a sun-dried tomato and roasted vegetable tart. So we'll first begin by chopping two medium onions and then we're gonna mince three cloves of garlic. Then to a large pan on high heat, we're gonna add in about half of a tablespoon of olive oil. And when it's hot, we can add the onions and garlic to it, cooking this for a couple of minutes before we then add in one and a third cup of frozen green peas, along with one cup of sun-dried tomatoes and then some spices a teaspoon each of dried oregano, dried parsley, and dried basil, along with half a teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. Then we're gonna stir this all up and cook it for about two to three minutes, and then we can remove it from the heat. We're then gonna transfer the contents of the pan straight away to a food processor, where we're also gonna add in about three quarters of a cup of hummus and about two tablespoons of breadcrumbs. Then we're gonna pop on the lid and we're gonna blitz this all up until we're left with a smooth and creamy mixture. So for this next step in the recipe, we're gonna need a vegan puff pastry dough and ours just happens to be pre-rolled out, which is kind of nice. But you might find that the version that you have at your local grocery store, it needs to be rolled out with a rolling pin. If that's the case, just make sure to roll it out to be about three to four centimeters larger than the size of your tart pan on all sides. Now for this, I'm gonna be using a lightly greased 10 inch or about 25 centimeter tart pan to which I'm gonna add the puff pastry dough and I'm gently just gonna press it down along the bottom and up along the sides. But because the version that we bought at the store actually doesn't fully cover our tart pan, it's totally fine. What we can do is just cut off any excess and then it's really sticky. So you can just kind of almost cut and paste little pieces onto the pan to fully cover it. Then using a fork, and this is an important step, we wanna poke holes in the bottom of the dough and we do this so that steam can escape as it's cooking so the pie crust doesn't puff up in the oven. And then what we can do is sprinkle on about a tablespoon of breadcrumbs just along the bottom before we then transfer the sun-dried tomato and hummus mixture from the food processor into the tart pan. Then using the back of a spoon, we're gonna gently spread this all out until it's nice and even on the top. For the next step, we're gonna actually need a potato peeler and we're just gonna slice one zucchini into thin little strips. When you find that you get to the seeds that are in the middle of the zucchini, it's gonna get a little bit harder to peel. And when that happens, just turn it around and start peeling it on the other side. We're then gonna repeat this again using a potato peeler to peel two medium-sized carrots into thin little strips. What we'll do now is we're gonna use those veggie strips to create a decorative pattern on top of the tart. We're gonna alternate between using the zucchini and the carrot strips, and we're gently gonna press these strips into the hummus mixture all while creating this spiral pattern all around the tart. And as it fills up, you'll actually see it starts to come together and look really cute. So we'll just keep doing this until we've used up all of the zucchini and carrots. When we're done with the veggies, we can then roll in any overhanging dough that's around the perimeter of the pan, just to form a little bit of a crust. I'm even using some leftover dough just to press it into the edges here to make for a thicker crust, and that way we don't have to waste any of it. We can then finish the tart off by brushing about a teaspoon's worth of olive oil over the top of the vegetables and also onto the dough that's around the rim. And then we can bake this all in the oven that's been preheated at about 400 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius for about 40 to 45 minutes or until the crust is golden. Now when the tart is removed from the oven, we wanna first let it rest for at least 10 minutes before we cut into it. When we are ready to enjoy this one, we can gently peel the crust away from the side of the tart pan before removing a slice to serve it up. If you'd like to add a little bit of garnish, some fresh parsley goes really well with this one. And I find that the taste and texture of this tart is absolutely heavenly. The hummus and the sun-dried tomatoes make it really creamy and also taste really rich and decadent. And then the roasted veggies give it all a very lovely caramelized taste. The grand total for this recipe comes to one euro and 32 cents per serving. And if you choose to serve it with the optional parsley on top, the total comes to one euro and 35 cents per serving. For the final recipe, we're making a super wholesome and comforting coconut green spinach curry. 
The first thing we want to do for this recipe is just a little bit of soaking, which we actually want to do the night before. So what we want to soak is about half of a cup of dry mung beans and also half of a cup of chana dal, which is also known as split chickpeas. But we want to do the soaking in separate bowls. Then the next day, what we're going to want to do is just drain the chana dal and give it a quick rinse before we add it to a large pot along with about one and a half liters of water. And then we're going to cook this uncovered at a gentle simmer for about 20 minutes. Then we can add in the drained mung beans and then we're gonna cook this for an extra 15 minutes. We're adding the mung beans a little later just because they don't need as long to cook. Had we added it a bit sooner, it might have gotten mushy. While the legumes are cooking away, we're gonna do some chopping. First, we'll chop two medium onions. We'll mince four cloves of garlic, two teaspoons worth of ginger can be minced as well, along with one red chili pepper. And finally, we'll coarsely chop about one large tomato. Heating up another large pan over medium high heat, we're gonna add in about a tablespoon of vegetable oil. And when it's hot, we can add in the onions and we're gonna cook this for about three to four minutes. Feel free to add a splash of water as needed to deglaze the pan and to prevent it from burning. And then what we can do is add in the garlic and ginger, cooking this for another couple of minutes. Next goes in the chili along with one tablespoon of tomato paste and a teaspoon each of ground cumin, ground coriander and garam masala. And then we'll also add in half a teaspoon of ground turmeric powder and salt. Then give this all a stir, cooking it for about one to two minutes, which is just enough time to hopefully toast the spices, but we don't want those spices to burn. So once it becomes a bit aromatic, we can then add in the chopped tomato, stirring this in, and we can drop the heat to low while we tend to the legumes. So go ahead and give that dal and those mung beans a little bit of a taste test just to check to see if they're cooked through. And if it is, we're first gonna wanna steal about a third a cup of the cooking water that it's been kind of cooked in, and we're gonna transfer that over to a blender. Then we can drain the legumes. Now returning to the blender, we're also gonna add in four cups of fresh spinach. We're gonna put the lid onto the blender. We're gonna blitz this up until we're left with a super vibrant and beautiful green liquid. Now returning to the pot with the onion and spices, we can turn the heat up again because now we're gonna be adding in that blended spinach mixture along with all the cooked legumes, one can of coconut milk. We're personally using full fat coconut milk here. And then we're gonna give this a stir and let it heat up while we roughly chop another four cups of fresh spinach. And then we can add this to the pot as well, cooking it all through until it's softened, which is just gonna take another couple of minutes. Just before serving it up, I personally highly recommend to add in the juice from at least half of a lemon, which I feel cuts through the bold flavors of the spices really nicely. So once this is added in, we can just give it a stir and then we're ready to serve it up. We're gonna be serving our curry with some warm cooked brown rice, but feel free to serve it alongside some non or regular white rice if you'd prefer. And then go ahead and add a few scoops, generous scoops, of some of that creamy green curry to the side of it. If you'd like, you can then garnish it with some optional fresh cilantro leaves, maybe a little sprinkle of dry chili flakes, and also a lemon wedge, because I honestly think you can't have too much lemon juice with this recipe. It's a comforting meal packed full of amazing flavors. As with most curries, I feel like the flavor of this one is delicious the same day, but even better, in my opinion, the next day when the spices and flavors have had time to melt. So make sure to pack up any extras in containers to enjoy in the days that follow. The grand total for this recipe comes to one euro and 47 cents per serving. And if you'd like to include the optional garnishes, then the total comes to one euro and 65 cents per serving. But hey friends, I think that's it for today. Hopefully you've got three new recipes that you can try at home and I'd love to know which of them you wanna try out first. So let me know in the comments below and the full breakdown to the recipes as always, those links are in the description box below as well. Thanks so much for being here with us. Really appreciate it. Pick Up Limes signing off and we'll see you in the next video. Had we added it a little bit sooner, blah, 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 limes. So the next day being today, when we soak or when we cook it, <sighs> What am I saying?